A couple hours ago, the news broke that the Cardinals will look to trade DeAndre Hopkins this season. So the question I want to answer, there's three of them. The first one is, because he'll be 31 at the start of next season, it's important to evaluate how his game will age and if he's even worth trading for or paying at this point. Second question, exactly how much is he worth in a hypothetical trade? And then the third question I want to answer is, what team makes the most sense? What team should pursue him? What team do I predict he'll be on next year? So those are the three questions that I want to answer. So with that being said, let's get right into it with some tape evaluation on DeAndre Hopkins. The thing that makes DeAndre Hopkins really special is his hands and that catch radius and his coordination while the ball's in the air. He is amazing at it, one of the best ever. And I don't think we're going to be sitting here in a couple years saying like, man, Hopkins is washed, dude. He just forgot how to catch it in his old age, right? I think that he could wake up at age 50, hop out of bed, and still make some ridiculous one-handed catches. I think that hand-eye coordination is going to be with him the rest of his career and really the rest of his life. It's just a question of his athleticism and how that can hold up. I know in the last few years of fellow Cardinal Larry Fitzgerald's long, long career, he was still putting up on-target catch rates of 98.1%. And 96.1%. So those are ridiculous numbers. I don't think hands and catching is a skill that really leaves you. So Hopkins kind of superpower is going to age pretty well, I think, which makes me confident in trading for him at age 30. But, of course, there's a lot of other aspects to playing with receiver that we need to talk about. Now, one of the things about DeAndre Hopkins is he's never really been a superstar athlete, at least from a testing perspective. He had a horrible shuttle time. Wasn't really fast in the 40, ran something near a 4.6, right? He's a little bit smaller than I think a lot of people expect him to be, considering he's known as this jump ball winner. He's only six foot one, so this isn't a guy who, like, just is way more athletic than all the competition, which I think also bodes well for his future. Hopkins has never had the luxury of being able to cut technical corners because he's the best athlete out there. He has had to become extremely refined, not only at the catch point, but as a route runner as well. And you saw it this year versus the Vikings. Uh, this play, just not a very good rep of coverage by Cam Dantzler, I think. Turns his hips upfield a little bit too early, just as Hopkins breaks this outside and then stumbles trying to flip his hips and turn there. Hopkins is pretty open, so... From this route, this isn't anything too crazy, but I do like the technique at the catch point. Even when he doesn't really have to here, he attacks the football at its highest point and then gets both both feet down and bounds, toe tapping. So again, not cutting any corners here, attacking that football even when he doesn't really need to just to get in the habit of doing it as he's done his whole career and then tapping the feet in a sideline situation. Like nice stuff from him. And then a bit later in this game, you got him matched up on Cam Dantzler again outside leverage again and this looks like the same speed out that he ran before starting to stem the route inside and then after a couple steps he starts to break it outside you see him I mean this would have been a good speed out probably because he gets under the shoulder of Dantzler and kind of forklifts his arm up which creates kind of this lane to cut under him and that probably would create some separation so this really seems like a speed out to cam dancer we saw it before he's breaking it outside oh man he's lifting my arm up he's kind of throwing me forward and is about to cut towards the sideline oh man oh man oh man but that's not what this is hopkins slams the brakes settles down and creates tons of separation on dancer i mean look at that but it doesn't really matter because watch the cardinals offensive line here right Murray has no chance to to find Hopkins on this play and has to scramble for a first down instead or near a first down instead. But again, making everything look the same, but it's slightly different. And look at all that separation, Hopkins to Dantzler. And after this, he's just toying with Dantzler now. This time, Dantzler's playing off. Once again, Hopkins is making that look like that speed out at the sticks. Once he breaks outside, Dantzler starts coming downhill from depth. And as soon as Dantzler pulls the trigger on that, Hopkins drives his foot and flies up field. You can't really tell how much separation he gets because Kyler pretty quickly gets sacked and the camera pans to him. But I'm willing to bet that he wins over the top here and, and maybe could have turned this into an explosive play if the offensive line held up a little bit more. But I feel like some people just think of DeAndre Hopkins as kind of a contested catch artist, but the guy is a very, very crafty route runner and still very savvy at this point in his career. And again, that's something that is going to continue. He's not going to forget how to do all this manipulation stuff as time goes on, right? So I like that about his game going forward as well. 
here's another bit of route running that I love from him. They're going to motion him across the formation, and then he's going to run like this fade route, or at least it looks like a fade route. About 10 yards down the field, he throws his hands up in the air and just says, throw it up to me. I'm going to moss this guy, right? And this corner is in pretty good position, right? He's above Hopkins. Hopkins isn't open down the sideline here, but he's just so good in contested catch situations that it's not Hopkins' speed that's scaring this corner. It's literally his ability to climb the ladder and go get it, right? So he doesn't need to be super fast to threaten guys deep as long as he's got that contested catch ability. And as a corner, if you're seeing Hopkins calling for a potential mossing down the sideline, that's going to make you nervous, and you're going to prepare for that. And you're not really expecting, once you're in this situation, Hopkins to snap down and run a comeback route, right? So that's another really good bit of route salesmanship, selling the fade with the hand and then snapping down. And when he's in his break here, this ball is like halfway to him. He has like a millisecond to actually locate this thing and catch it. But of course he does, right? Makes his break, eyes up, football, bang, catch, reaction time really quick. One of the most gifted catchers of the football we've ever seen, obviously. We all know this. I still hold Hopkins in a very high regard, all right? He had one catch for four yards in this game, but that's because Trace McSorley was his quarterback. He was open all day, running by guys, and really good at settling in zones. That's one thing that stands out with him. Keenan Allen is an example of a guy who I don't think moves very well, but because he diagnoses coverages so quickly, gets to his spot and settles down wide open so often, he still puts up good numbers. I think that DeAndre Hopkins is still moving pretty well at his age right now, but even once that goes, he's still going to be able to be productive because of that ability to dissect zone coverage. Hopkins picked up two yards per route run versus man coverage this year. That's a pretty good number to be at, especially considering the quarterback he had for most of it. And then he was at 2.4 yards per route run versus zone, so also a very good number. So those are the reasons, despite his age, I'm bullish on his future and would be down to trade for him for the right price, everything for the right price. Now, what is the right price for him and what teams might actually be down to do that deal? Let's dive into that real quick. There were a bunch of wide receiver trades last year to help set this market. Uh, it will probably be somewhere between the A.J. Brown deal. A.J. Brown was traded for a mid-first round pick, a third round pick, and his new contract was worth $25 million a year. So that's probably the highest end a pretty unimaginable high end for the DeAndre Hopkins deal. And then on the low end of the spectrum, you've got the Amari Cooper trade from last year, a very talented receiver who only went for a fifth round draft pick. But the reason for that is he had kind of a high cap hit, $23 million each of the next two years, and he was a little bit on the older side. So that's why I went for such a low price. Now, considering that DeAndre Hopkins will be turning 31 before next season, it would make more sense for something more similar to the Amari Cooper deal than the A.J. Brown or Tyree Kill or Devontae Adams type of deals. But it's definitely going to be somewhere in the middle. But I think Hopkins' value this offseason is going to be closer to A.J. Brown than that fifth-round pick that the Cowboys got for Amari Cooper. The reason I think this is for a couple reasons. First of all, it's a copycat league. Everyone who traded for a wide receiver last year, it worked out for them, right? Adams had a monster season. Tyree Kill completely changed that Miami offense. A.J. Brown completely changed that Philadelphia offense. A couple years ago, Stephon Diggs totally turned around uh, Josh Allen's career, right? And even Amari Cooper, right? That was probably pretty good value for Cleveland, right? He had a nice season. So, when all of these wide receiver trades are working, other GMs are going to see that and say, well, I want to trade for DeAndre Hopkins now that he's available. I also think that DeAndre Hopkins is a better player than Amari Cooper was when he got traded. Also, just look at the supply of wide receivers there were last year. It was a historically good draft class. Garrett Wilson, Jamison Williams, Drake London, Olave, Burks, Dotson, Pickens. All of those guys would probably be wide receiver one in this draft class. There are some nice prospects in this year's class for sure, but it's not like last year's to me. Not even close. So if you want a game-breaking wide receiver, you gotta look at Hopkins. Same thing with the free agent wide receiver class. The best guys you can sign are Alan Lazard, Jacoby Myers, and Juju Smith-Schuster, and there's no guarantee that those guys actually hit the open market. Who knows what can happen between now and March? 
So we've already seen Chase Claypool get traded for what ended up being the 32nd overall pick in the draft. I'm sure because teams have looked at the other non-trade options and said, this ain't great. We got to trade for guys if we want them. So it's a good year to be selling wide receivers right now, in my opinion. So with all that being said, I think you'll have to part with your second round pick if you want to trade for DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think it'll be a first because he is older. He hasn't played that many games in the last two years. And, you know, you have to pay him that contract. I don't think it'll be a first round pick, but I do think he'll demand a second in this market with how good he is. As for exactly what team he'll go to, let's refer to this chart of NFL team resources. It will probably be a team with a decent amount of cap room to take on his new contract. Now, they probably won't trade him in the division, so it probably won't be Seattle. He has a no trade clause, so he can choose where he wants to go. He would probably approve a trade to a contender, I would assume. So probably not the Texans, probably not the Bears, probably not the Colts. And probably, obviously, not the Cardinals. Now, that leaves a couple more teams. I'd say the Falcons, it's probably not them considering their quarterback situation. But maybe you could say they're playoff contenders because the division is weak. But I think Patriots and Giants probably make the most sense to me when it comes to fits. Another team to watch out for would maybe be the Chiefs. The Ravens potentially also, but they just spent their second round pick on Roquan Smith. They gave him a huge contract, and we'll see about the Lamar situation. I don't know if they're in a position to give out another big contract this year. So maybe these three are the teams I would would say make the most sense. Right now, my guess would definitely be New England, just because I know Bill Belichick holds DeAndre Hopkins in a very high regard. He's talked about it multiple times in press conferences. Here he is mic'd up talking about how much he loves DeAndre to DeAndre, saying, like, what a career you're having. You missed half the season, still going to lead the league in receiving. And this year, if you're looking at the production, uh, DeAndre Hopkins had 700 yards in just nine games. So from a production standpoint, that's, that's still a little bit true. And look at what DeAndre Hopkins says back to Belichick in this clip. You know I do my job, man. And you know that's exactly what Belichick wants to hear. That's exactly the mentality he likes in players. Do your job is the big slogan in Patriot world. So I think Bill Belichick thinks the world. I know Bill Belichick thinks the world of DeAndre Hopkins. I would assume that's still true. And they've been trying to secure a good wide receiver forever, right? Whether that be the Antonio Brown deal that didn't work out. Nikhil Harry, that draft pick didn't work out. Last offseason, they traded for Devontae Parker, a former 1,000-yard receiver. That didn't really work out probably the way they hoped. But Hopkins might be the guy. Hopkins might finally be the answer they're looking for. I think that he's the type of wide receiver that they always look for. Jacoby Myers is a free agent this season. I I think everything might be aligning here for that Bill Belichick, DeAndre Hopkins uh, partnership. Obviously, trying to predict the exact team he'll land on is kind of a shot in the dark as this news only broke a couple hours ago. There's not many leads. The main point of this video is to say, I think his skill set is going to age well and he is worth trading for. That is the main point I'm trying to make. That's the whole video. That's all I got to say about the situation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the playoffs coming up in the next week, and I'll probably be breaking down something that happened in those games by this time next week. But if you have any other ideas, of course, let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.